Hello and welcome to our fourth episode of the Parcel Tutorial Series. My name is Andrew. And as you know, we are walking through the Parcel Quick Start Guide um, so to help you get started building uh, with Parcel. So today we're going to talk about compute jobs. Compute jobs are one of Parcel's most powerful features um, for a couple of reasons, um, but mainly because they leverage something called confidential compute to ensure that data is protected and private even, even while it's being processed. So, uh, you know, what does that mean? You can kind of think about it like a black box. Uh, encrypted data goes into the box. The application goes into the box. Inside that black box, the data is decrypted in a way that no one can see it other than the application. The application analyzes it, encrypts the results, and passes it outside of the box. So in this way, you can have an application that can run on data that even you, know, you as the application owner can't see and don't have access to. So it's a really powerful feature. It's used by a lot of our customers to ensure that their users have greater control and oversight about how their data is used um, and really provides um, some of these strong privacy guarantees that are, are critical to the Parcel uh, API product. So um, I'm joined today by Nikhil. He's our Parcel guru. And per usual, he's going to walk us through um, how to run a compute job on Parcel. So Nikhil, take it away. Let's get started. Yeah, happy to show all of you viewers how to run your first compute job. So to recap from the previous video, uh, we had two actors, Bob and Acme. So mm -hmm. Bob was the data sharer um, and they shared some data with Acme um, who wanted to use that data. Um, and they did this via something that in Parcel we call a grant. So walking through how we did that really quick, we're gonna do a very similar setup here. Um, so first we're going to connect to Parcel um, with Bob authenticating with his private key. And then we're going to upload a document as Bob. This time it's going to be a recipe um, with 14 grams of butter, 15 grams of chicken sausage, some feta, some green pepper, and some baking to put it all together. Um, a lot of butter. <laughs> lots of butter. Maybe too much butter. <laughs> Um, so, so then once that document is uploaded, um, Bob is going to be able to create a grant uh, where they specify Acme as the grantee, that's Acme's app ID. Um, and in the previous video on introduction to grants, we specified this as our grant condition. So what that condition said was that the document ID um, that Acme is being granted access to um, needs to equal the recipe documents ID or in the previous video, the ID of that document. Um, and this was fine, uh, but it allows Acme really unconstrained access to that data. Um, specifically, Acme was able to download the document directly, um, which is okay for some use cases, but it means that the audit trail of how that data is used um, is really lost since it's no longer within the Parcel ecosystem. Um, once a do document is downloaded, Acme is free to share it with third parties however they want to. And so we'd ideally like to constrain that a little bit more. Um, and that's really the feature that Compute Jobs unlock. And without further ado, let's see how we do that. Um, so the grants condition in this case is expanded to have now really two requirements um, as we have with this and operator here. Um, so the first requirement is again, that the documents ID is the same as before. Um, it has to be equal to the recipe document. Um, and now the second we specify using the selector called job.spec.image. Um, and in this case, we want it to be equal to bash. Um, so this job spec image really is a Docker image. Um, and Docker images are how you specify um, how a compute job should be run. And so what we're saying here is that the Docker image wants to allow Acme to run over the data. It has to be just the, the bash image. Mm -hmm. um, obviously this is a really loose requirement since running the bash image by itself is super flexible and you can do really anything. Um, and in a future video, we'll show you how to write your own custom compute images that will let you constrain this even more. Um, but for now, let's stick with bash and see what that lets you do. So now let's move on to Acme side. 
Um, Acme, just like Bob, connects to Parcel and tries but fails to download Bob's data um, since we only gave them access within the um, parameter, the context of the bash compute job. Um, so in the previous video, this succeeded and Acme was able to download Bob's document. Um, this time we're going to get a permission to that error. Um, but since Acme is able to access the document within um, the context of that job, let's go ahead and define it. So this job spec is how we specify what a compute job will look like. Um, the image is the Docker image that we want um, the compute worker within Parcel to um, use to execute the job. In this case, it has to match exactly the condition that we specified above. Um, so just bash. Uh, you'll notice that here, um, just the image itself is used, um, but we can have, uh, but Parcel is flexible enough to also let you specify any tags or um, checksums or anything. So you can not worry about updated versions of Docker images and tie it specifically to a very specific version of the Docker image you want to use as well. Um, once you have selected the image that you'll be running, um, the next thing to do is to specify the inputs and outputs of the job. So the input documents should be all things that um, the, the creator of the job has access to within the context of the job. Uh, if it doesn't, the compute job will fail. Um, so in this case, Acme has been given access to the recipe document and we're gonna specify that as an input document. And also we're gonna specify the mount path to be recipe.txt. What that means is that um, when the job kicks off, we're going to have a volume that mounts all inputs into this parcel slash data slash in directory um, and the specific path to which that recipe download document is gonna be downloaded is recipe.txt. Um, similarly, we have output documents that we can write to um, or rather that the job can write to and will be output as output documents after the job completes. So um, very similarly, specifying this mount path as count.txt means that we can write um, to this file, parcel slash data slash out, um, and then that mount path, count.txt, and we can expect that to come out of the job as an output document. Um, one more point of note is that for each output document, we can specify an owner. And this is pretty powerful if you think about it. Um, since we specify Bob as the output owner here, what this really means is that Acme ran this compute job over Bob's data and they didn't ever have direct access to the data set itself. And they also don't have access to the output since the output owner will be Bob directly. And Acme can only access it if Bob creates a new grant that grants um, Acme access to that output. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, all Acme does is, is provide the custom code that will execute. In this case, it's just going to write the word count um, of that input into the output document. Cool. So what have, how do we actually create this? All you do is run parcel.submit job with the spec of the job you want to run. And once the job submits, you'll get back a job ID. Um, that job ID is now usable to pull the status of the job. And that's exactly what we'll do. We're going to keep pulling what the job status is for our job until it finishes. Um, the way we know when a job is done is so it can be in one of several job phases um, and those job phases will be told to you by the job status whenever you get it. Um, it can be in either the pending phase, which means that the compute job is waiting to be run but hasn't been accepted by a compute worker quite yet. There is the running phase, which means that it's currently running on a compute worker. And then depending on whether it failed or it succeeded, there is a succeeded and a failed job phase as well. Um, 
So, so that's what this will do. Hopefully, once the job completes, um, the final phase that'll be in is succeeded and not failed. That'd be really good. Um, and once that's done, we can also check the output documents that um, the job came up with, um, which in this case should be the count. Um, and that's just the one and only document. That's where this zero index comes from. Um, and we can go ahead and just try and download that just as we did before. Since Bob is the owner of that output document, um, they should have no problem doing so. And outputting the result should print out just 12 words since that's how many words a recipe had. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned before, Acme should not be able to download it. And once again, even if they try to download that output data set, they'll once again get a permission denied error. Um, and finally, the last thing that we can do is Bob. Um, once Acme has run this compute job, they should be able to go through the history um, of accesses for their recipe document and see that Acme indeed accessed it. Um, so there we get the audit trail of how compute was used on the document as well. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and build and finally run that just to make sure things do happen as we expected. And yeah, there we go. Um, we uploaded the document as Bob, then Acme tried to access it um, over here. Then they were unsuccessful. Um, just as expected, they can't download the document directly. Then instead they specified a job spec and started running it. Um, looks like the job finished pretty quickly and got to that succeeded phase um, where we got that count document as an output. Um, there's its document ID. And yeah, nice success um, going forward and downloading it as Bob, we see that as expected. We do see that it has 12 words um, by reading the output document, but Acme has no idea that it has only 12 words since when they try to download the output, um, they once again get a permission denied error. Um, and finally, going to the audit log, uh, we see that that's Acme's ID. And when looking at the audit log for the recipe document, um, it's exactly Acme and Acme has access to this document uh, exactly once. And that was when the compute job ran. Um, we only log any successful access. And that was the one time that Acme successfully accessed the recipe document. Um, yeah, and just to recap, all of this happened without Acme ever seeing either the inputs or the outputs. All they supplied was the custom script that executed and ran some compute over the document. And yeah, we'll see how we can do more flexible things with um, more complex code and custom Docker images in a future video. Thank you all, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting model because essentially as an application or developer or as a, as a business, you can provide a service to your customers without having to really get total control over their data. So it creates a new paradigm that you know, might be appealing to your users or might be valuable as you're um, potentially thinking about building products um, that allow you to partner with businesses in new ways. So um, definitely, you know, let us know if you have any questions about running compute jobs, you can check out our Slack channel. We're always there, um, you know, answering questions and working with our developers to make sure uh, that things are going smoothly with Parcel. Um, you know, at this time we've finished uh, most of the, the tutorials uh, and the main quick start guide. But we're gonna dive into some special concepts in future videos. Um, so definitely stay tuned for those. Uh, we've got a lot more, uh, a lot more to show you with Parcel. So, so thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.